summer right around the corner with baseball starting. Uh, feel free to put in the chat where you're zooming from, as well as if you want to put what baseball team you're zooming for. It's always fun to see where our alumni are from, where their interests are. Um, it's been great to have uh, these webinars with alumni joining us from all over the world. So let us know in the chat where you're joining us from. A few ground rules for this evening. Uh, we would request that uh, you could please mute your microphone so that we don't have any ambient noise uh, distracting our speaker. You can leave your camera on though. We do like to see smiling faces from our audience, uh, but it's not required. Uh, and also, since we always get this question, we will be recording this session and sending it out afterwards. So no need to take feverish notes or worry about that. We will send all of this uh, after the event. Uh, so now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Alan Chen, who has so graciously joined us for uh, a number of uh, a number of these events uh, with financial literacy. Alan graduated from uh, Macaulay Honors College um, at Baruch a few years back, back in, what was it 2015, Alan? Is that when you graduated? It was 2017, so not, not too far 2017. off. 2017, yeah, I was close. Um, and Alan, after he graduated, uh, realized that despite getting a business degree from a business college, he actually had no idea what to do with his money that he was earning with the first job he got after graduation. So he went around, went about uh, teaching himself financial literacy. Uh, and now he wants to share that knowledge with students and alumni at Baruch, which is what brings us to this evening's event. Uh, and something that Alan frequently says at some of our past events uh, is that you can always look up the answer to our que your questions online. There are so many resources out there. Uh, and tonight's event about teaching yourself financial literacy uh, is going to help shed some light on where you can go to find this information when you have questions that come up, whether it's about retirement, et cetera. Um, so this should be a super interesting session. Feel free to put questions in the chat bar throughout the presentation. Alan will try to answer them uh, during as uh, throughout the presentation, but we'll also have time at the end to take any additional questions. So if you don't get your question in early, you can always ask later. Um, that being said, I'd now like to introduce our speaker, Alan Chen. Take it away, Alan. Thanks, Greg. Always appreciate your introductions. Um, so hi, everyone. Welcome to Financial Literacy Workshop. I see that some of you are from Brooklyn. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn as well, so it's nice to see fellow Brooklynites. I usually, usually host these workshops on a monthly basis during the fall and spring semesters for both students and alumni. And as Greg mentioned, um, not only is the recording being sent out, but the slides as well, along with notes. Right? So you shouldn't have any trouble uh, you know, following along and retracing anything if you missed anything. So on the side, I also run a blog right, to moonfund.com where I write about personal finance and retirement. I mean, it's very strictly heavy on numbers, uh, but I think it's a good place to learn and get started. Uh, but today I'm touching upon a very important topic of financial literacy and teaching yourself financial literacy. Uh, we all know schools and colleges don't teach us financial literacy. Uh, and even if they do, it's arguable how useful it is or in terms of content and when they teach it, right? So obviously there is a big problem with you know, the knowledge in financial literacy. There's a giant gap for it. Um, and it's evident by the fact that I have to give these, uh, these financial literacy workshops and so much people have to attend to learn. All right, so luckily for us, knowledge is democratized. Right? For those of you who are lucky and sufficiently motivated, it's available online. The question is, how do you find it and how do you get to it? Uh, at the end of this webinar, I hope that you know, everyone will have a good idea about how to you know, teach themselves financial literacy and get started. Someone mentioned Barbados has lovely and warm weather. That's great because it's super rainy in New York City. So, uh, you know, it's fantastic. <laughs> Love to be there. Um, yeah, but just a quick introduction, just to add on to what Greg has already mentioned. Uh, I am a CUNY Baruch graduate. Right? I come from a low-income immigrant background, and that plays into many facets about where I'm coming from and what I'm learning. Uh, basically, it sums up to that I never learned about money. Right? I never had conversations about money just because there wasn't a lot of it around, and my parents didn't speak English. Right, So they didn't know stuff about 401ks, IRAs, insurance, like all of those concepts were foreign to them. Um, and I had to pretty much learn most of it myself uh, or find people who knew more information. Uh, but, you know, I firmly believe that everyone should have the opportunity to retire, right? Um, to get their financial uh, life together and have a good idea about you know, taking responsibility for their monetary future. And, and part of that is 
really understanding financial literacy uh, and you know, taking action from there. Now, throughout this workshop, of course, feel free to interrupt me. Or you can always, I always love to answer questions. Just leave a question in the chat. I'm monitoring it and watching it. And if I miss it, Greg will catch it for me. So don't worry if your question is uh, overlooked, but otherwise, you know, feel free to shoot questions in the chat. Now, quick disclaimer, right? I am not a financial advisor uh, or a lawyer, right? And most importantly, I am not your financial advisor. I'm actually a software engineer as a full-time job, right? So financial uh, literacy is just something that I'm really interested in and I love sharing with students and with fellow alumni just because it's a good idea to spread the knowledge. And of course, remember that anything I share here, be sure to share with your friends, your family, right? As far as I know, um, it's better to share the knowledge rather than keep it to yourself. And we're gonna talk more about that in a bit. Uh, someone asked, what books and resources do you recommend for improving financial literacy? That's great. And we're gonna dig into that just in a little bit. I'm gonna go over how, uh, you know, I really learned about financial literacy. All right, so, you know, the first rule of financial literacy, in my opinion, is what is right for you may not be right for others. Um, if we know anything about financial literacy is that money is a touchy topic, right? Just because it worked for me doesn't mean it works for you. Right, so we all have to do our individual research to get a good idea about where we are in life and where, our, where we are in our financial lives to really make improvements from there. All right, so the financial literacy world is messy and there's a lot of noise. All right, everyone likes to put these absolute rules in place. Like, you know, you can't have any debt, right? Well, you know, that depends on what kind of debt you have, right? Or you shouldn't invest in X, Y, Z. You know, it really depends on what kind of investment you're making. And right, so there's a lot of absolutes, but really when you examine everything, there's more to it, right? There's more detail involved and there's more nuances involved. Um, so I'm gonna talk about my journey and how I went from having no knowledge about financial literacy uh, to becoming the expert, expert that I am today. And this all started right after I graduated college, right? I didn't know anything. I got my first paycheck and I was like, I have to, I have to do something, right, with this money. I can't just leave it uh, sitting in the bank, right? That's the one thing I knew that was, that was not great, right? Um, and of course, I don't know all the answers, right? I'm not here to tell you I know everything because I don't. Um, what I do know is how to find answers and who to ask, right? So of course, my one selfish request is that you share the knowledge as well, right? Don't just keep this knowledge to yourself once I tell you it, right? Share with your friends and your family. I'm only one person. I can't teach everyone, but you know, hopefully if I teach enough people, they can teach others as well. So we can sort of improve the world slowly. All right, we hear this phrase a lot, just Google it. And that, you know, that's, that's it. That's my secret to knowing how to solve everything when it comes to financial literacy. You know, of course it's April Fool's Day, so I had to sneak this one in, uh, but we hear this one a lot, right? Everyone sort of tells you this, uh, and it's probably one of the most useless pieces of advice out there. Yes, Google is very large. It's an archive of information, uh, and you can find a lot of information on it, and answers to your questions. But at the end of the day, financial literacy requires a base knowledge, right? And if you don't know what you're Googling, you're not going to know what to look for. And then you're just, uh, you're just, you can't find what you're, what you're looking for. And then you just don't know how to really improve uh, your financial literacy from there. Right? So I'm guilty of saying this phrase a lot when I was starting out as well. Um, and I try to catch myself because it's, it's not a useful phrase, right? You, you want to teach people how to, how to find information and where to look for it. Um, and it definitely does not start with Google, right? You wanna give people the knowledge and the tools to do the research. So if I was talking about my journey, I think it sums up to three steps, right? Um, and the first step is the basics like I mentioned, right? So hopefully you all know that financial literacy is free. Someone mentioned, you know, books and resources, right? All of those things are online for free. And, I, and all the resources I'm gonna mention are free, right? You don't have to pay for anything. I'm not here to sell you, here's my you know, free step course to learning financial literacy. I think that's a absolute waste of money, right? I think that the knowledge is free and there's no reason you can't just ask me, you can't just ask people who are you know, further along in their financial journey about it. You don't need to pay for any of this, right? I wanna say that uh, straight up. Now, when I was starting out on my journey, I actually went on Reddit 
Um, if anyone is surprised about this, uh, maybe you haven't seen Reddit or you've only heard uh, negative connotations about Reddit or negative stereotypes about Reddit. Um, but for a quick summary, for those of you who don't know what Reddit is, it's basically a social media site for communities, right? And you can be anonymous. Um, the structure of these communities are usually forum-based. Right? So you start off with a topic and then other people respond to that topic, right? And they, you know, they can add on to that conversation. Personally, I never used it prior to getting the basics down for personal finance, right, or financial literacy. Uh, so when I first found out about Reddit, I, I was skeptical, right? How can, how can there be a free resource where I can learn a lot of things from other people who've been through similar situations as me, right? Honestly, Reddit, you know, does have a negative connotation and the source, source of information is social media, right? So you have to take it with a grain of salt uh, it's user created information. So you, you know, you can't be absolutely sure that's accurate, but it depends on how you, you look for information and where you look for it. Right. I'd argue that some communities are not great. Some communities are toxic, but there are good communities out there to teach you and they want you to get better at financial literacy. So luckily for us, there are a few great communities that I will share today. And the first, first one I wanna to share today is actually one called personal finance. And I've linked it below there as well. Uh, but personal finance is a term that's pretty much just means financial literacy, uh, almost one-to-one, -one. Uh, but basically it just means managing your money, right? How do you manage your money? Um, and this is a community of 14.4 million people who are talking about managing their money, right? You know, like how can they help each other out to make as much as much money as possible and retain as much money as possible, right? Of course, not every piece of information and advice is great, right? Everything, like I said, should be taken of a grain of salt and your situation is not gonna be the same as these 14.4 million people. Uh, but maybe you can learn a few lessons, right? And learn a few things from that. And as you can see in the sort of structure in this uh, community, you ask a question and you, uh, you get a response to that question. I mean, you'll see other stuff that is at the top related to coronavirus, right? So current events is very popular in this community. Right? Obviously current events are very tied to our personal finances, whether it's a recession, a stock market downturn uh, or job loss across the country. These things are very tied to how we manage our money. Um, so this, this area, uh, this community is trying to address those issues. So here's an example of a Q&A. Uh, we won't focus on it too much because it does require you to have a set of base knowledge. So it's something that you can revisit once you, once you learn more about financial literacy in general. Uh, but what they're asking basically is, here's a question about a first time home buyer and they're asking how much can they qualify for, right? So how much home can they buy? You don't wanna buy too much home because then you'll be house poor. If you don't know what house poor means, is, it just means that you have too much of your, your assets and your net worth in a home. Right, so you should diversify your assets in uh, multiple asset classes so you can reduce your risk. Right, a lot of big words, pretty doesn't mean anything to anyone if they don't know what they're looking for. So that's how we're going for the basics. Uh, but you know, they ask this question and uh, they get a response. And it looks something like this: basically, a user in this case, Walk and Crunchy Leaves is the user's uh, name here, and they're completely anonymous, so they gain no benefits um, and they lose nothing, of course, if they they give an answer um, and they basically gave this answer and 523 people said it was a good answer. So it seems likely that this is an answer that you can follow, you can take suggestions from, but obviously make sure to do your own research. Uh, and again, right, this is all free, right? I won't focus on this too much, but you don't have to make an account to look at all of this. You can just go to the, go to the site. Now, in terms of the basics of financial literacy, uh, personal finance actually has a really good Wikipedia page, right? Just like how you can go Wikipedia and you can find up information. This is a similar concept. They just call it a wiki instead. Um, and it has a bunch of valuable information, very similar to a getting started guide, right? This gives you the basics of what you need to know um, in terms of like how to handle your money, right? Basically, if you have no one to talk to, this is where you want to go to get a good gist and good idea about, about, uh, about where your money should be going, how to manage it, and so on, right? And they usually divide this getting started guide into multiple age groups because different pe people at different ages 
generally have different financial needs um, and it makes it more digestible, right? If you're on the younger end, you might have to worry about college debt. You might have to be thinking about buying your first home. If you're on the uh, older end, you're thinking about how to retain your wealth, right? You've built all this wealth. How do you keep it growing or how do you keep it from losing value um, or how to retire, right? So different age groups will have different main topics, essentially. And here's an example of advice for young adults, ages 18 to 25. Um, and you'll see they talk about taxes, they talk about student loans, uh, they talk about debt. So there's a whole bunch of information regarding this and it's really a short read, right? It's not long at all. It's, if you spend 10 to 15 minutes, you'll, you'll read all of this and you'll have a good idea. And they also have links to other information, right? So it's, it's good to familiarize yourself with, with all this information because it is a decade of information sort of condensed, right? This community was created over a decade ago and it's been validated by millions of people, right? So millions of people have used this guide and said it's good. So you can say, okay, good, good idea that it's a good place to get started, all right? So I might not have all the information you need for your specific situation, but it will provide you with the background you need to begin your research, all right? So the goal is to get started and this is where you can go to get started. Now, of course, there are other useful communities on Reddit as well. Um, and they refer referred to as subreddits, which is just another term for communities on Reddit. Um, and here are a list of them ranging from beginner to expert. Um, and I've picked them based on the questions that I get asked during some of my uh, financial planning sessions with, uh, with students and with alumni. Um, and usually, you know, it's, it's a wide breadth, but it should give us a good idea to help us get started, right? So the first one here is credit cards. And obviously the communities are linked on the slide so you can check it out um, and you can see uh, what the community has to offer once you click on that link. Uh, but credit cards is straightforward, right? A lot of Americans struggle with credit cards. It's not our strong point. Um, and I strongly encourage you to check out this community if you don't have a credit card um, or if you're just getting started, right? So this is a good area to get a good idea about what credit cards are, how to use them, how to pay for them and what are the good practices um, other things is financial planning, right? It's a smaller community, but similar to personal finance in many ways. And I usually engage with both communities because they have a very a strong uh, user base and they're very responsive usually. Now, next one is investing, right? For those of you who are following uh, stock market investing, especially in the first couple of months after uh, the the issue or the, you know the investing. Um, uh, popularity that came from the game stock stop that really popped up um, investing stock market investing is a big part in wealth generation especially if you come from a low-income background it's one of the most affordable ways to build your wealth right real estate in new york city that's that's out of the question but investing in stocks that's one way to generate uh, wealth um, and it's good to stay up to date when it comes to investment news because things can change really fast that you know i'm sure you, all of you know uh, but you should be careful of other subreddits when it comes to investing, like Wall Street Bets. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad subreddit, uh, but I'm saying it's not for beginners, right? If it's your first time investing, don't go to investing communities that aren't beginner friendly, right? You'll just get lost and you might not really understand what's happening there. Um, otherwise, others that I want to talk about is financial independence. Right? So those of you who understand financial independence, then you'll know when I say it stands for, you know, being free from having to worry about your monetary needs. Right? Financial dependence sounds different for everyone else, but it basically means you can financially secure your future. So you either can retire early or no longer have to work for money, right? So that's a big part here. Um, and then there's lean fire, which is basically the same thing as financial independence, but it's for people who have realistic salaries and compensations, right? So this is for people who are government workers, people who aren't making six figures their entire life and it'll help them sort of navigate retiring early, right? You don't have to retire at 62. You can retire earlier if you follow you know, some good practices and follow some, some good, um, some good uh, investing strategies. Um, and someone mentioned in the chat uh, about talking about real estate. Um, I can speak about real estate and it's important just because the next subreddit that I want to bring up is real estate investing, which is self-explanatory, right? Um, I don't think I need to explain this one too much. 
Uh, but basically, real estate is a great way to maintain your wealth, in my opinion. Right? It's it's a, it's an area that you know, obviously, if you can afford to buy real estate versus paying rent for the same uh, amenities, right? If you're paying for the same space, same everything, you'd want to uh, buy real estate for that. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with renting, right? It really depends on what you want, right? So it's a good way to build wealth, but I don't want people to uh, become confused and think it's better than the stock market investing, right? On average, stock market investing is higher than real estate investing. And it's something to just be aware of. Like you can find statistics out there, but that's what happens on average. Of course, you know, if you buy a really good property and it appreciates faster than the stock market, that's a different question. But to keep in mind that you're putting a lot of money into one location versus stocks where you can diversify more, right? So basically, Real estate is more risky as an investment. It's something to keep in mind. Uh, but you know, if people are curious to hear more about real estate, feel free to uh, bring it up more because I'm actually looking for a condo right now. And the home buying process is an, event, an adventure. Uh, I can tell you that for sure. And I can definitely talk about it and from my personal experience and from what I was looking for during my process, if that's interesting to people. Um, but just to continue here, I would say, although Reddit is a good place to you know, get the basic knowledge up, um, it does have a negative connotation associated with it, um, and there are upsides with it. So here are the key takeaways, right? It's, it's a great place for crowdsourced knowledge. In other words, you have a bunch of strangers gathering together to help each other out. Um, but the downside is that uh, these strangers are just your average people, right? Just, just you and I talking about their experience, which may not be reflective of your um, needs or my needs, right? Your, your, your specific financial situation. Right? In that case, you might want to have a financial advisor or a legal counsel, right? Don't blindly trust everything on Reddit, um, which, you know, really leads us to our uh, next step, uh, which is essentially, now you know what to Google, right? Um, you can Google once you have the basics down from Reddit. Um, and a good example is uh, if you were talking about debt, you can find stuff like, you know, how long will, um, do I need to pay off my debt for, right? How long does that take? Uh, how much interest will I pay over that period of time? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it just means you need to get the basics down when it comes to debt, which is okay, right? Um, everyone starts at a different pace when it comes to this. What's important is to get started and to start learning. Uh, but before I move on, uh, there's a follow-up question to that real estate question. Uh, what advice can you give someone who wants to start investing in real estate? Uh, I would say you should have a good idea about where you want to invest based on the amount of wealth that you have, right? Um, and it really depends on where you're coming from, right? I don't like the idea of being house poor, right? Having a large portion of my net worth uh, locked up in a home, right? Because first of all, it doesn't appreciate as, as fast as stocks on average, right? So I prefer to have some of my assets in stocks and some of it in real estate, right? So if you're talking about buying in New York City, I think that it would be very difficult to buy in New York City in, in, a, in a financially healthy manner, right? Because you have to put down so much money and your mortgage is going to be so large, uh, it's almost impossible to not be house poor unless you're making a lot of money. That's then the equation goes out the door and it becomes something like, you know, if you're making so much money, how do you want to uh, distribute your wealth um, and manage it? Which is a different conversation altogether. Uh, but I think it's very difficult to buy in New York city, right? If anyone's, if anyone's having trouble buying real estate in New York city, you're not alone in, in that, in that, uh, in that situation. It's definitely something that people struggle with. Um, and I struggled with as well. But basically, it's knowing your, your limitations, right? Figuring out how much you can actually afford and having it make sense. Um, someone mentioned, what about an Airbnb business? It can make you money, but you need to crush the numbers, right? Uh, if you want Airbnb to, if you want to start an Airbnb business, it has to, it has to make sense, right? It has to be more than your mortgage. Um, and it can't just meet just your mortgage because what if you have to pay for, costs associated with maintenance, 
right? What if you have to fix the roof, right? All of these costs are gonna build up when it comes to owning property. And if you're just charging just enough for the mortgage, um, then you're building equity, but you're, you're still effectively losing some money, right? So I think as long as you're aware of where you're coming from and you've crunched the numbers and they make sense, then you're good to go. If you haven't done any of the number crunching and you're just wondering, can I make some money off of this? You're, you're not going down the right path, right? It's good to be familiar with how much money is going out, like outflows and how much money is coming in. Right? And if one number is larger than the other one, you got to figure out this is worth it or not, right? Because everything comes with risk. All right. Um, now on to the second step in this journey. I think that Google is great for finding information, but also there's also some information that you can go to uh, in terms of trusted sources, right? So Google can lead to some bias sources in terms of articles, sites, uh, YouTube videos, which are very different from Reddit, um, and they can sort of sway you. Um, and it might not be in a good direction fitting for where you're coming from, right? So for your financial situation. So it's very important to find trusted resources when it comes to um, sort of verifying your information. All right? So there are a few good trusted resources. Um, and one I want to bring up is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau or CFPB, right? This was formed in 2011 to protect consumers, specifically people like you and I, uh, when it comes to financial products, right? So part of that mission is educating the population on financial literacy, right? So you can see on their homepage, there's a ton of information ranging from the coronavirus, scams, student loans, and so on, right? There's a whole wealth of information out there uh, regarding all of these current events. Um, so, you know, it's good to find out if that information uh, applies to you. Um, and coming from a government resource, you can sort of trust it, right? It's not out to sway you toward a certain um, product, right? Or tell you to spend money a certain way, right? This is, should be all free and it should be all available for you. You should also should not have to provide any of your own information, right? So specifically, if you hover over consumer education, as you can see here, uh, you'll see a whole list of topics, right? And I recommend starting on Reddit, um, on your age group, getting a good idea about what you need to know um, and then expanding on these topics when it, by going on the CFPB site, right? They'll have all topics you read about on Reddit uh, right here detailed. Um, and you'll notice that uh, another thing you can do here is on the left, on the right-hand side, you'll see submit a complaint right underneath the little star. Um, and the one thing, the one other thing that the CFPB is responsible for is you can report an entity that you feel is treating you unfairly when it comes to financial products, right? So there are law and regulations associated with how a company can do business, right? And for example, if they're not giving you a refund and you deserve a refund, right, this, you know, you can submit a complaint and you'll get a refund right away. Um, and I actually have a recent experience with this. I ordered a, la a laptop and it never arrived, right? The shipper company, and the electronics company said they delivered it and they sent me in circles. You know how it is, right? You tell them one thing and then there's like, they're like, hey, but they said they delivered it uh, and it just goes back and forth, right? And it went back and forth for two months, right? So obviously they're just wasting my time and they're not giving me my refund. Um, so I just told them, um, if I don't receive a refund, uh, I might have to report you and submit a complaint to the CFPB. And guess what? They, right after that, they just gave me a refund. Like no questions asked, here's your refund. Um, so, you know, I think that a lot of companies are unreasonable um, and they'll take advantage of the fact that you don't know you can submit a complaint and they won't do anything until you threaten to submit a complaint. So you should really understand, um, you know, both financial literacy and how you're protected, right? So this is an important tip and tool that you can, you can look into. So just remember that no matter how no matter how you learn financial literacy, you need to verify the information, right? On government sites is one place you can verify it because it tends to be trusted and unbiased, which is the most important thing. Because financial literacy can be can be so biased, right? As some someone in the chat asked questions about real estate. You know, some people can say, "Hey, you should put all your money in real estate. No stocks. We don't do stocks here." Um, and obviously, that's very biased information, right? There's 
opportunities to make wealth both in stocks and both in real estate. It really comes down to your approach. And if you've done enough in-depth research to justify uh, the approach that you're taking. Now the CFPB even provides uh, resources for teachers to teach financial literacy. So if there are any teachers on the line, right, I would encourage you to check, take a look, right? They'll provide worksheets, they'll provide guidance on how to teach financial literacy and offer free, right? Because their goal is to sort of spread this information. Um, that's also my goal as well. Um, and then, you know, there are worksheets, right? You can find budget worksheets. I've linked a couple here um, in this, in this uh, PowerPoint where you can just sort of click on it and you can fill it out and you can figure out how much money did I spend last month, All right? So that's very important information that I hope all of you uh, have a good idea on. Um, and then there are tools, right? A good example of a tool, let me just take a, take a second to show all of us. So uh, can you all see this on the screen? Uh, I should be on the CFPB site and explore interest rates. Nice. Uh, yes, you will have access to the PowerPoint and the links um, and, and also this recording, right? All this will be available to you um, along with my notes. So you see here on the site, if you're buying a home, you might wanna figure out uh, how much you can borrow and what your interest rates are. All right, so for example, since, since I'm in New York City, let me just uh, pull up New York here. And let's say my credit score is around 720. Uh, and I want, you know, there's no home for 200 in New York City. You're we're probably looking at like maybe 1 million, right? If you want a good home. Um, and let's say you want to put 20% down because you have to be competitive in this, uh, in this environment. Uh, and, you know, I said I was in Brooklyn, so let's just do Brooklyn. Look at that, there's no information on this. Well, let's see if I can do something else here. I just picked a different country here, different county here. Um, but you can see here there's lenders offering 3.375%, 3.125%. Right, so you can find a whole bunch of information when it comes to just um, the CFPB. And also, um, I know it's like a whole database of information where you can get a good idea about the current financial uh, landscape of things and products, right? So it's, it's, it's a good tool. Uh, but aside from that, they also have uh, databases to their information. So there's reports telling you, hey, uh, how are people doing, right? How much does it cost to uh, eat every day for a family of three, for example, right? That data around that. Um, and there's a whole bunch of information and I really encourage you to check it out and to get a good idea about you know, what the financial landscape of, um, of the United States is like. Right? Obviously right now, not great, but improving, right? So it's, it's good to know. Uh, but, you know, lastly, you should understand your rights as a consumer and you should be able to take action on it, right? If you want to file a complaint, you should file a complaint. It also does help that every state has their own version of the CFPB, right? So it's not as comprehensive, um, but it is a great place to find the local laws related to personal finance. Um, a good example of local laws are, you know, how how long can your uh, how long can a collections collections agency collect your debt, right? Maybe it's seven years, maybe it's ten years, right? So that's sort of like state related information, and you can find it uh, depending on on what what state you're in. Now, here are a few key useful government sites that I wanna go over. Um, I visit all of them and I recommend you to do the same, all right? So the IRS or the Internal Revenue Service is an obvious one. If you haven't filed your taxes, you should. Um, and this is one place you can sort of get information about that, right? So you can file your taxes here. Everyone should have an account with them because once you have an account with them, you can see all of your past uh, tax filings. Right, so if you ever need to download tax receipts for whatever reason, um, or pay any taxes that you might owe, own, the IRS website is a great place to do that. Um, and their website is generally very secure, so you should be you should be safe there. Um, the second thing here is the Social Security Administration, right? So they collect taxes um, and distribute uh, benefits uh, when you're closer to retirement, right? So this is your Social Security, this is your uh, Medicare. Right, so you need to know basically how much your social security is gonna be when you collect it, 
um, around your 60s, right? 62 to around 70. Um, and if you pay taxes, then you pay your social security taxes. So you should definitely have an account here to figure out how much you estimated to receive, right? They do estimate for you based on your income, how much you would receive monthly, right? So that's something that's very important for future planning when it comes to future financial planning. Um, and they'll also tell you to qualify for Medicare right? or if you need to work additional years to qualify. Of all things here is a New York State Department of Labor. This one is um, respect, you know, of course, if you're not in New York State, find your respective State Department of Labor. Um, and it's, it's, it's important here, it's mainly here because of the pandemic. Um, it's, it's where you apply for unemployment and pandemic existence, right? So we've had a record number of people with, um, you know, who are unemployed, right? And we have strongly encouraged you to apply for unemployment if you've been unemployed. Um, and this is where you would go to do so. Now, last one here is the Department of Finance. Uh, which is your respect or your respective city department for finance, right? It's where you pay your local taxes and has information regarding state or city laws concerning topics such as debt or fraud, right? So it's much more detailed than the CFPB because they can afford to be more detailed when it comes to uh, both state and city regulations and laws. Now, the last step on, on my financial journey is um, much more ambiguous, right? It's, it's exploring, right? You learn the basics from Reddit. You know where to confirm that information. You learn from a trusted source, right? So you're going to these government websites, you're confirming, hey, what I learned is that, is that correct, right? Or not, right? You can find out that it's incorrect. It's what's important is that you confirm whether it's true or not. Um, and, but you also find that you know, Reddit doesn't do a good job for specific use cases, right? You could have a very specific use case, uh, which probably all of us do, right? Our financial picture looks different uh, from person to person. Uh, for example, uh, people always say, spend less money than you make, right? That's a good topic. Um, and it makes a lot of sense for the majority of people. And the majority of people would agree, right? So there are great tips for achieving that. On the other hand, and if I was, you know, if you're 28 years old, considering a career change that might add to your student debt and you aren't quite sure what to do, you, you might need to explore and weigh your options, right? That's not something you can just do, hey, let me just quickly Google that up uh, and find it either on Reddit or somewhere else. Right? You're not going to find that anywhere uh, because it's very tailored to your, your situation. And in terms of like getting answers for, for very specific things, it's, it's about finding your, your money mentors, right? Um, it's finding people who have experienced your situation or something similar to it and could provide both, both context, uh, empathy, and, and understanding of how to approach it when they, were, you know, when they were in your shoes at one point. So I will say YouTube is a huge resource um, and there are many experts out there who can, who can advise you on what to do with your money. And you can consume endless hours of video and learn so much. Uh, but I also recommend that, um, you know, you really want to make sure you find people who align with both your interest and what you're looking for, right? Um, and if you need more of a personal touch, then that means you have to find professionals, right? Um, I've only recently, a good example is I've only recently started following my own taxes this year, um, prior and the prior year. Uh, previously, I had an accountant who filed my taxes um, and watching them file taxes, asking them questions is what taught me how to file my own taxes, right? I didn't learn how to file my own taxes uh, by myself, right? That's, that's a whole other challenge uh, all by itself. Uh, someone asked, what YouTube channels uh, do you like? Uh, I would say that uh, good YouTube channels, I would say, is I think there's a good YouTube channel from PBS actually called uh, Two Cents, right? Or something like that, Two Cents. Um, but other uh, YouTube personalities that are more uh, involved, I would say. Um, there's Graham Stephan, right? He's really good. Uh, there are, uh, there's a YouTuber called Andre Jock, right? Uh, he's really good. Uh, but I can send the links if, you, if anyone's curious about them um, in the chat. And, you know, they really do go a long way in terms of helping you understand the, the current financial landscape. Um, oh, there you go. 
two cents. Greg's finding them already. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, but you know, I think one of the most important things is you want to find money mentors who look like you, right? And what I mean by that is if, um, you know, if you're Asian or if you're black, there are going to be very specific uh, money mentors who can provide context for where you're coming from, right? So I would encourage you to find those money mentors. Of course, they're going to be smaller on YouTube um, for a lot of reasons, but I would strongly suggest you take a look uh, for them. And if you need recommendations, I can provide that for you. Uh, but, you know, you want to make sure that your money mentor has the right context from where they're coming from, right? Are there any online groups or social media pages to follow? Uh, I would say the online groups would be the Reddit communities I've mentioned where they're anonymous. Um, in terms of social media, it's, it's a little bit tougher. Um, I think Facebook has a lot of financial groups, right? You can take a look um, and just Google you know, uh, financial literacy or financial mentors, and you'll find a couple of groups, uh, but they're all very, they're all very biased, right? That's the one thing I will say uh, that you have to be careful and wary of. Um, in my journey, I didn't find a good set of uh, useful social media pages, uh, but you know, there are a lot of them out there, right? I won't say they don't exist. Uh, a bit off topic, but what sites do you recommend for filing your own taxes for free, if any? What an, what an excellent question. Uh, let, me, let me just uh, pop out of this view for a second and uh, see if we can find that for us. So as I mentioned before, the IRS website is a great place to find information. And what do you know? If you hop on the IRS website, you'll see right here, it says, file your taxes for free. Uh, and if you click on that, you know, you can basically go ahead and file your taxes for free. Obviously, there are certain... Um, restrictions with that, depending on your income, right? But if you fit it, you know, you can file your taxes for free. So let me just go ahead and share this link with everyone in the chat. So that's one way to file taxes for free. Uh, you know, I personally used TurboTax um, last year and this year. Uh, I'm probably not gonna use TurboTax going forward just because they tend to be on the pricier side. Um, and they do, they are a company that uh, advocates for uh, more expensive tax filing software. So their interests and my, and my interests don't align one-to-one. -one. Uh, so definitely not, not a company that I want to support. Uh, but, you know, otherwise you can find information for uh, filing taxes for free at that link uh, right there. When you click on this, you basically, you know, go through a bunch of stuff and you should click on the startup, start the lookup tool. So one thing I will say is, you can see that I'm moving very fast, right? There's a whole lot of text on the screen and I'm not reading any of it. Uh, and that's because I've read, read it already and you should read the text on the screen. You shouldn't just start clicking buttons. Um, so once you read everything, you, you know where to go, you click on start lookup tool. Um, and basically you felt this, this tool um, and they'll tell you uh, what you qualify for. Um, and let me just enter a bunch of information. Uh, let's see here. What we got here. Uh, this is 50k. And no thanks. Dependent zero. No. Enter state. New York. So once you fill this all out, oh no, you'll get a list of how you can file taxes for free. All right. Obviously there'll be other criteria, but you know, just make sure that. Uh, you follow this and you should be able to file for free. If you're not filing for free, don't hit the submit button at the very end. Make sure to call a customer service and find out why. So I mentioned, since you will not be using TurboTax, what would you be using going forward? Um, so obviously I don't necessarily recommend any specific software, right? Um, because I'm not in a position to recommend specific software. But I will say that there are companies that don't um, support TurboTax's practices right, and support not providing uh, a tool that's low cost and or free to people um, when it comes to filing their taxes. Um, but I believe there is a tool called Free Tax uh, USA, right? I think my brother actually used this tool and he mentioned that it was great. You could do a whole bunch of stuff on it. You could even file for taxes 
when it comes to cryptocurrency. Um, and they charge only $15 for context. TurboTax charged me uh, around $90, $80, right? So they're, they're, their company out to make a lot of money uh, on me. And I'm just trying to reduce, reduce my costs over here. Um, but this is a company that I plan to use. I'm not saying you should use this company, but if you want, you can, of course, try it out. You know, if you like it, you know, keep using it. Otherwise, use a different company. Uh, but this is what I plan to use going forward. All right, great. Uh, and here we go. The last thing here is, you know, if if you need to find a financial advisor, right? Uh, so I mentioned is one of the great companies. Yes, Free Tax USA. So we got a, we got a person that used it before. So that's good. Um, someone to vouch for it. But, you know, if you need to find a financial advisor, you should find a financial advisor, right? Making friends with professional investors um, never hurt. Um, the presentation will be available along the slides and recording. Um, and it never hurts to grow your network, right? I learn about what I should invest in. I learn about all my good financial tools. And part of it comes from finding a good network um, and it, people to share that knowledge with. And the last thing here is your social circle, right? So uh, I'll be one of the first one to call out is that my significant other told me about the high yield savings account, right? So that's something that I didn't know about. And I'm sure a lot of you know about it, right? So that's something that I learned not from reading on Reddit, not from reading on these uh, government websites. I learned that from talking to people, right? My friends taught me how to negotiate, right? Uh, co-workers and I talked about salaries and that's how we're able to understand, you know, where the salary bands are and how much to ask for, right? I will say that not everyone is comfortable with talking about money, uh, but I do think that you should become more comfortable, right? Your social circle is a very powerful tool. And at the end of the day, most people are just trying to build wealth. Um, and, you know, just because you build some wealth doesn't mean that someone else can't build wealth as well. So we should be sharing tips and tricks to help each other, you know, because it goes a long way. Right? Although money mentors are great, I still think you should verify everything with trusted resources. Right? Just because someone said, hey, you should uh, put XYZ in this investment doesn't mean you should go home and just invest in, uh, in that investment. It means you should go do your research, figure out if this is the right investment for you, because it may be right for them, but it's not necessarily right for you. So always be sure to do your, do your uh, research. Now I wanna bring up life events because like I said, everyone's journey is different, but there are key points in our life that can, are shared more or less, right? Which means, which makes my workshops uh, much easier because I can answer questions based on those key events as long as I've experienced them. Um, and here are just a few examples, right? Uh, generally people graduate and they find a job, right? Or they purchase a home, uh, and they have life partner and maybe they have children, right? None of these are must haves. Uh, the only must have on this list is you have to retire, right? All of us are gonna have to retire. And I know some people, especially really young people say they're gonna work forever. It's not gonna happen, right? At some point your body or your mind's gonna give out. So you should prepare for that time. Um, and we should all you know, take some time to prepare and help each other out when it comes to that. But financial literacy is a lifelong journey. And all of us are on this journey at some point, right? And we should all help each other out and share the knowledge. Now, here are a few key takeaways, right? From this, I want all of you to go, you know, basically go home with. Um, and you should learn the minimum knowledge to engage, right? Which means you need to learn the basics, right? If you can't engage in a conversation about financial literacy, you're basically blocked out from conversations about how to build wealth, how to retain your wealth. Talk about real estate, right? All of these things are blocked out for you if you don't know where to get started and where to learn terms um, and the basics, right? And the Reddit, Reddit personal finance wiki, wiki is a great place for that. Uh, also, make sure that during your learnings and discussions uh, that you confirm your knowledge with reliable sources, right? Such as government sites, right? You shouldn't take everything um, at face value. You should always go back and verify. Uh, and start becoming more comfortable talking about money, right? Ask your friends and family how much they make if you're comfortable sharing with it as well, 
right? And try doing it with your coworkers. Um, you know, I think as long as you're able to remove emotion from it, um, everyone wins, right? You can, you know, there's a certain approaches to it. As long as you set your boundaries, uh, it'll become easier and you overcome that awkwardness. Um, if you can't set boundaries with the person, then I'll say, you know, that's where you want to draw the, draw the line if you want to talk about money or not. But it shouldn't be a hard rule where you don't talk about money at all uh, because then you can't help people out and you can't help yourself out. Um, so, you know, I would encourage uh, friends and family to do the same, right? Everyone deserves a fair chance at engaging the world in a financially meaningful way. And not everyone has access uh, to these workshops, right? So I, I'm only one person and right? hopefully my message can become our message and we can spread the knowledge together, right? This PowerPoint, these slides or share it out, share it with other people, right? You don't have to uh, keep it to yourself. Um, and I will, I will say that one thing I do offer is um, free 30 minute financial literacy, uh, financial literacy coaching sessions, right? Not, not a financial advisor, I wanna reiterate that. Um, so I will be teaching you basically how to find information, right? The goal is to teach you to find information that you need and tell you what I would do. That's not necessarily something that you have to agree with or do, right? Uh, but it'll give you insight, right? I'll let you talk to someone that can sort of, you know, give you, give you the basics and help you navigate, all right? Not necessarily guide you toward the best path, uh, but it'll guide you toward a path and you can learn upon that and improve. And look at that. Uh, Greg is very sharing the link right there. Someone asked, how do you start looking for a financial advisor? Uh, reach out to your immediate network, right? If you have coworkers, ask them about uh, your, uh, ask them about financial advisors, right? I talk to my coworkers about financial advisors. If they made them money, they'll probably make me money. But obviously you should interview all of your financial advisors, find out how they're getting paid, right? If their pay is tied to your net worth, right? Um, or if it's tied to selling you financial products, maybe you want to steer clear because their incentive is not necessarily to help you, um, but to to uh, to drive you away from that. Someone asked uh, to share the link for the financial literacy coaching session. I think Greg shared it above, uh, so that should be available. But let me let me go ahead and share it again. Never hurts. Uh, let's see here. But look at that. Uh, here we go. Oh, wrong link. Look at that. Let's see. So this is the link for the financial literacy uh, coaching sessions. So you can check that out. Um, and it should basically look like this. And you can pick a time uh, that I'm free. If, I, if I'm not free during any of these times, right? Shoot me an email and we can work something out. Uh, but just to sum, the, sum this all up, right? This is a link to my blog, right? So be sure to check it out. Um, it's definitely a place that you can learn about, you know, more information. Uh, it's very number heavy um, and it looks like this. I don't write on it as much as I should, but it is a place where you can find more information uh, and just learn about what I'm interested in and how I got to where I am. Otherwise, I also have a new YouTube project that I'm working on uh, that hopefully I will get out in the fourth quarter of uh, 2021. And you can find more information here. If you're curious about seeing me talk more about this and seeing me say more about financial literacy, about uh, any of these topics, feel free to subscribe. Um, I will hopefully have a video out by 2021. Uh, but I think the last thing here is my email. Feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, I am available to chat. Some people have asked for uh, some advice uh, through email and it's worked out just fine if you don't wanna talk over the phone or on Zoom. Um, the last thing here is I will have a workshop for uh, budgets and how I came up with my spreadsheet for, a bu for my budget. That was a big topic um, that was asked a lot. Like how did I come up with numbers for my for my budget and how to approach it. Uh, but you can sign up for it there. Um, and it's in, on April 28th at 6 p.m. 
can we find you on social media? You can find me on that YouTube link <laughs> is my, is my best, uh, best uh, guess for where you can find me. But you can also find me on LinkedIn, right? Just type in Alan Chen if you're curious about that. Uh, you can feel free to connect with me. I'm always happy to chat more on there as well. Someone asked, please explain the term for fee-based in relation to financial advisors. Uh, I'll, I'll do you one better versus just explaining it. I will find information for you in real time so you can learn to do it as well. Uh, but I think that financial advisors are, are tricky, right? You never know what you do. You do have a good idea once you meet them, but you never know before you meet them do they cater to your best interests um, or they don't, don't they? Right. So there's this idea of a fiduciary financial advisor um, and look at all these ads. So you can find information about fee-based, right? This is a good example of just knowing what to Google um, and you'll find the different ways that financial advisors are compensated, right? So there's commission-based commission and fee model or fee only. Um, I would say, I personally would only find a financial advisor that is fee only, right? Because I know they're not trying to sell me life insurance or specific product where they're making money off of it. Uh, because if they are making money off of something that they're selling me, how do I know that it's, with, it's for my best interest and not because they're trying to make a quick buck, right? So you can find more information here. Uh, but fee based basically, um, means that you're only paying for that financial advisor and they're not being compensated in any other um, method, right? Is, is one way to put it. Uh, so usually they're paid hourly, uh, you see here, um, or a percentage of assets, right? So, or a flat fee, right? So there's many ways to go about it, but you definitely, I, I personally would go for a fee only financial advisor. Not saying you should, but my reasons are, I don't want to have a financial advisor that may not be uh, thinking about my best interests. Yeah, but basically very short read and you'll get all the information you need in these couple of paragraphs. Yeah, hopefully that was, uh, that was insightful. Thank you very much, Alan. Uh, another wonderful presentation, really appreciate it. I put in the chat, everyone, um, the link to RSVP for the next event we'll be having with Alan about Spreadsheet Your Budget at uh, the end of April. Uh, so we hope to see you there as well. And if there are any other questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. We'll stick around for a little bit to answer some more questions. Um, and really, we're looking forward to that YouTube, Alan. Uh, I, know, uh, I know I'll be eagerly awaiting that first video um, and we'll all, be, uh, we'll all be ready for that. And uh, just thank you again, Alan. Really appreciate all of your uh, advice and tips. Yeah, always happy to help. I'm definitely gonna stick around for a bit. So if you have questions, happy to happy to give them a shout. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Any other questions, please direct them to the chat. And as Alan pointed out, uh, his he's so generous to uh, to have meetings with alumni, students, other people who are interested in just learning more about financial literacy. Um, so feel free to schedule on his calendar or shoot him an email, he's happy to, uh, to talk about these things with you and, and set something up. 100%, I always feel that a lot of conversations need to happen on a one-on-one -on -one basis to really sort of uh, learn from it, right? And really have a direction, which is and as you mentioned, Alan, everyone has a unique situation with their yeah. finances. So it's as much as we wanna look things up, we can definitely gain the knowledge we need, but there's not always a solution that we can just Google for our own particular needs. So it's what makes an, an appointment with you um, so helpful. Any other questions? This has been wonderful, Alan. Thank you again. Um, yeah. And we will follow up with the recording as well as links uh, to a variety of things that Alan has referenced and the, uh, the presentation. So we will be in touch shortly and hope to see you at the next event at the end of April. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Alan, really appreciate uh, your presentation. And are there any final words you'd like to leave everyone with, Alan? 
I would say the last word I wanna I wanna leave everyone with is make sure that you're not keeping this knowledge to yourself, right? I'm sure some of you in this in this audience are very financially savvy, maybe even more so than I am. Um, and I would encourage you to share that knowledge with other people, right? Because everyone's been in a state where they don't know anything at some point in their life um, when it comes to financial literacy. So just make sure that you don't forget, you know, where you might have came from and just share back, share and give back to your community is, is a big thing. Um, and if you it's, if that means just sharing my slides and my recording, feel free to do that. Um, I definitely think it's helpful. Excellent advice, Alan. There really needs to be, we need to destigmatize this whole idea of talking about finances to your colleagues, friends, et cetera. So hopefully we'll get there and uh, very, uh, very good advice. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you soon. Thank you again, Alan. And have a great night, everyone. Have a good one. Take care.